It was in the 1980s, and there was this horrible story about this little girl. I think it was a girl. Who fell down this tube in the ground. And days passed as they were trying to rescue this precious young girl from this horrible situation. She was stuck. She was stuck in that horrible situation. And it was, <laughs> it was riveting. Everybody was watching the news, constantly trying to find out if they were going to rescue this child and get her out of this bad situation. And sure enough, they did. And I'm telling you what, that place came to pieces. It was exciting. I don't know about you guys, but I can't imagine anything more frustrating than being in a place I can't get out of. As a police officer, I was always trained to sit with my back facing so I can see the door. And I always, when I walked in, I mean, it's, it's weird. And even now, my poor children have to deal with the fact that their father is absolutely in sitting. No, honey, you can't sit there. Daddy's got to sit there so he can watch the door. What am I going to do? Am I going to raise the cross up? I, I, no, that's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. But I always have an out. I always know how to get unstuck. The brothers and sisters make no mistake about it. Being physically stuck is horrible. I can't, can't imagine. In fact, I always tell people all the time, the worst problem to have in the whole world, the worst problem to have in the whole world is car trouble. I hate being stuck on the side of the road, and thank God for AAA, because now all I have to do, and cell phones. Can you imagine? Do you remember the day? Some of you don't remember this day. But there was a day back in, you know, when oil lamps and, and things like that. There were no cell phones, and so if you got in trouble on the side of the road, you either had to just um, stick out your thumb or you had to ho hopefully that a kind person had come by and help you out. But that was the world that we lived in. Getting stuck stinks. Well, brothers and sisters, make no mistake about it. If that's true in your physical life, make no mistake about it. You can get stuck in your spiritual and in your, in your emotional life as well. <coughs> in your physical life, you can get stuck. In your spiritual life, in your emotional life, in your psychological life, you can get stuck. And I can't tell you how many times I have found myself circling back to the same spot in my life, either because of anger or bitterness or jealousy or fear. And every time in my life, or if something happens in my life that reminds me of that moment in my life, I find myself, my emotions automatically going to that spot again. I'm stuck. I don't know if you've heard me tell this story, but I'll tell it again simply because, well, I've been gone a while and I like, I want to preach today. So that's very fine. A few weeks ago, actually before, um, maybe around, around the beginning of summertime, two of our, um, uh, I don't want to say oldest, but two of our most long-term uh, members were talking together at coffee hour. And one of the long-term members were saying to the other long-term member, and they had all, they'd been here through most of the, I mean, when we were just, when we were on Curry Drive and when we were... Uh, uh, when we uh, first got this property and we were all stuck in this. By the way, you see, that, you see that beam right there? For those of you who are new, that's where the old house used to stop and where they used to have church services. Everybody was kind of standing like this with each other. I can't imagine. What, no, what, most of you'd be outside. Anyway. By the way, I apologize. Don't apologize for the crowded conditions. <laughs> Tough. Anyway. Uh, so anyway, this was the old place. And the, the two uh, long-term members were talking, and one of the long-term members said to the other long-term member, so, you know, this, the building that we've got now, it's the crack in the wall. And it, it, by the way, it goes under the carpet, goes out through that door, right there where the old building and the new building meet. And this long-term member was saying to the other long-term member, said, you know what, this is, uh, you, we're, we're just, this poor building, we're just beating it to death. And the other long-term member said something that I found to be fascinating, and I overheard it. They weren't talking to me, so I was eavesdropping, which I'd be careful what I say around me. No, I'm just teasing. Uh, <laughs> I 
The other old term, a long-term member said to the one who was talking about the building being in, in, you know, kind of a challenging shape and being really beat up. He looked at her and said, well, you know, we were only going to be, we were only planning on being in this building for two years. That was 22 years ago, folks. It stinks to get stuck. Because there are implications and consequences to being stuck. If you get stuck in your emotional life, you can, uh, you can no matter how... In fact, I've met men who were 50, 60, 70 year old, years old, and yet they were stuck in their teenage years. And I never will forget this one guy who uh, was, he, he wanted to just be cool. And he's 64, 65 years old, right around my age. And... Um, Maybe it was resentful because he had still had his hair. But, uh, but anyway, that ponytail and that earring in his ear, and he was trying to keep up all with all the hip, cool language. And I'm going, and it just doesn't fit you. You're stuck. People who act immaturely in their life, even though they've had years and years and years of life, immaturity is a sign of being stuck. Especially if you're 30, 40 years old. The constant hunger for pleasure or the constant anger at some past wrong being done to you. You get stuck there and your life lives with the consequences of that. Well, if that's true of people, it's also true of communities. And so yesterday we spent about 735 hours um, in the Parish Life Center with Bill Marianas. It was 740, I don't remember. But um, after a while, I just kind of zoned out. But... um, We were talking about doing some leadership training for our parish council. And because, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. God loves you. You hear me? God loves you. God loves you more than He loves buildings. God loves you more than He loves houses. God loves you more than He loves cars and bank accounts and educational degrees. God loves you more than your accomplishments. God loves you more than your accumulated stuff. God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. And God loves you so much that He will not allow you to live as if being stuck isn't bad. God loves you. God wants you whole. God wants you healed. God wants you to be complete and mature and well-rounded and healthy. And when you're stuck, something's wrong. Where are you stuck this morning? Well, I want to tell you where our challenge is in our current life of our community. There are challenges to getting stuck. And I want us to get unstuck. Would you like to learn how to get unstuck? I want to get unstuck. One of the things that our community did several uh, uh, months ago, almost a year ago, uh, maybe over a year ago, doing the strategic planning initiative, and we came up with a why statement, core values, mission statement, and vision statement. Isn't that cool? I love doing stuff like that because it just, uh, you know, I'm not a big self-help guy because I find most of the stuff, you know, it's, you know um, all except for it was on fire when I, when I laid down on it. Everything I needed to learn, I learned in kindergarten. Don't hit, keep your hands to yourself. Share. But I love this stuff. Because it allows us to get unstuck from the stinking thinking that keeps us locked in a, pr- in a pattern of living and a pattern of behavior that has us repeating and going back to the same spot over and over again. And by the way, God will let you do that your whole life so that you will deal with that moment in your life and get unstuck. Emotionally, spiritually, physically, institutionally, get unstuck. And so we came up with a why statement. I love it. Welcome all to on a transformational journey to a life of purpose and salvation. Why are we here? We're here to invite everyone, to welcome everyone, you and your friends and your, and your neighbors and the people you work with and the folks across the street and people who don't look like you and people who don't have the same background as you do and people who may even not speak the same language that you speak. We're here to welcome everyone to a transformational journey to a life of purpose and salvation. If you want to get unstuck, folks, Get a purpose in your life. If you want to get unstuck, understand why you're here. Understand why you've been given the gifts that you've been given. If you want to get unstuck, figure out your why. 
If our community wants to get unstuck and build the necessary things we need to build to fulfill our why statement, getting unstuck from a 20-year holding pattern is absolutely essential for the spiritual health and the spiritual prosperity and the spiritual maturity of not only the people that are in this building right now, but the hundreds who will be able to come and know Christ because of our commitment to getting unstuck. Interested? That's pretty good, don't you think? That's not, not bad. I hope they're recording this because I want to remember it. So what are our core values? Number one, we're intentionally orthodox. We're not accidentally orthodox. We're intentionally orthodox. We are proactively orthodox. When we wake up in the morning, we know ourselves as orthodox Christians. That's why we make the sign of the cross and say the Lord's Prayer. We're intentionally, purposely orthodox. Secondly, we're a community. We're not, a one, we're, not, we're not a me and Jesus got our own thing going place. We share each other's gifts. We share each other's burdens. We share each other's tears. We share each other's laughter. We share each other's lives. We're a community. And we also practice agape love. By the way, you know that's agape love is different than just your standard run-of-the-mill love. Because Greek has several words for love. One of the words is agape, which means the love of God. You know why God loves you? Number one, because number one, He doesn't need you. God loves you, brothers and sisters, because God selflessly gives himself to you. Because you can't help him, and you can't hurt him. God's fine. And so when I love, I love unconditionally, expecting nothing in return. That's agape love. And finally, our parish is Christ-focused. Those are our core values. Finally, our mission statement to Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene is a welcoming family that develops intentional Orthodox Christians through worship, education, outreach, and service. We identified several places that we wanted to work on. One of them was education, but the main thing that we need to work on, the 800-pound gorilla, as Bill so aptly put it, is the fact that we need more room. And if you think for one second that this is a sermon about building the building, you're right. Because building the building means we've become unstuck. Pulling together as a community means that in your individual lives, you're becoming unstuck from the foolish and lying notion that you can do this by yourself. You can't. At the risk of sounding very political, God forgive me, it takes a village. God save us, please, Father. But more than that, brothers and sisters, doing something that selfless, Doing something, it says that an old man is wise when he plants a tree in his old age, knowing he will never sit under the shade of that tree. That's love, folks. That's wisdom. That's getting unstuck from the temporary and grasping onto and being made large and being whole and being made healed by the eternal wisdom of a God who wants you unstuck wherever you are this morning, whatever you're doing, whether you're stuck in your brain, you're stuck in your heart, maybe you're stuck in some bitterness that you just can't let go of. Maybe you're stuck in some unforgiveness that you just can't get past. Maybe your feelings have been hurt or you're in pain because of a wound, both either physically or spiritually. God wants you unstuck, folks. And this morning, God wants Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene unstuck. So, let's get unstuck. What do you say? Amen. Thank you so much for watching. I pray this was a blessing to you. If it is a blessing to you, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share these videos. It really does help us a great deal. Speaking of helping us, if you'd like to support this media outreach, go to our Patreon site at Faith Encouraged on Patreon.com. You can also visit us at our website at faithencouraged.org and write me 
at frbarnabas at faithencouraged.org. I look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless you.